The story I'm going to tell you, you're not going to believe. But every word of it is true. I know, because it happened to me. But enough about me. We really don't have time for that. And by we, I mean me. Dick Piston, hotel detective. It was a Friday night in the big city. And on a Friday night, you'll find me making my rounds at the Lakeview Hotel. A two-bit armpit on the upside of downtown. Any time before midnight, that is. After midnight, you'll catch me drowning my proverbial sorrows at the five-star dive bar in the lobby of that hotel. But at ten minutes to midnight, I'm always here in my office watching the clock. Not that I'm a proverbial stickler for whatever punctual people stickle for, and not that I couldn't use the overtime, but my employer had made it clear that anyone who did use that overtime would be spending all their time Xeroxing resumes at the discount copy shop on the corner. You see, the hotel had been wallowing in red ink for quite some time now, and it was likely to continue hemorrhaging proverbial money until it stopped hemorrhaging potential hotel guests. And I only wish that was a metaphor. The Lakeview Hotel had the highest mortality rate of any luxury accommodation west of Baghdad, or east of Baghdad, or in Baghdad. In fact, as hotel detective, I had personally investigated six unsolved murders in the last five weeks, and committed four, so the management wasn't entirely happy with my proverbial job performance. So that's why they told anyone who clocked even one minute of unauthorized overtime would be out of a proverbial job, literally. And by anyone, they meant me, Dick Piston, hotel detective. And that's why, at ten minutes to midnight, I had my proverbial eyes glued to the literal clock. Because when that strikes twelve, my Friday night nightmares become somebody else's Saturday morning problem. So if my luck holds true... Dick Piston, I need you! Lady Luck, you can set your watch by her. I need your help. I'm afraid I'm not the man you're looking for. Y you're not Dick Piston. No, I'm not helpful. But you are the hotel detective. For nine more minutes I am, and there's not going to be a tenth. So if your problem is any more difficult than a stuck pickle jar, I'm afraid I'm going to have to refer you to the day shift. But you have to help me. I'm the victim of a crime. Well, unless that crime is unnecessary sexiness, there's not much I can do in the time allotted. It's not unnecessary sexiness. Are you sure? Because that's not a banana in my pocket. Oh, wait. Yes, it is. Mr. Piston, please. You can't just turn your back on me. Not in that outfit, no. Then you'll help me. For eight more minutes, I will. But that's all the time we have. Will that be enough? Depends on the crime. What's yours? I think they call it murder. Uh-huh. And you're the victim? Yes. It happened just now, up in my hotel room. You know what murder is, right? Um, it's where the one where someone kills someone, right? Bingo, that's the one. <laughs> Yay! Oh boy. All right, I'm going to take your case, but I'm going to set an egg timer. When this goes off, no matter what, case dismissed. Is that understood? Mr. Piston, I can't tell you how grateful I am for this. Coming here dressed like that is thanks enough. You're welcome. Now, if you'll just take a seat, I have a phone call to make. But aren't you going to rush up to my room and examine the scene of the crime? Ordinarily I would, but we don't have that kind of time. Hello, front desk. It's Dick Piston, hotel detective. Put me through to the kitchen. What are you doing? Ordering room service. Will that speed up the investigation? No, not at all. Then why are you doing it? Because no man in his right mind would be alone in a room with a woman as gorgeous as you without at least a bottle of champagne and a half order of oysters on the way. I'll have the honeymoon special. Send it to my office, pronto. And some, uh, condoms. Thank you, Mr. Piston. How can I ever repay you? There are condoms on the way. Mr. Piston, I'm a married woman. Then you can never repay me. How did you know it was our honeymoon? Just tell me about your murder and get it over with. If we make this quick, I still might be able to Xerox some resumes before morning. Well, I was up in my room right before dinner. So, you have any? No, not yet, but those oysters sound delicious.
Murder took place in the bathroom. No, in the bedroom. After your shower? No, during. So you were shot in the shower by someone in the bedroom. What makes you think I was shot? Because if it was a stabbing, you would have been in the same room with the killer. My God! You think he was in the shower with me? No, I think you were shot. But I wasn't shot! Look! Or stabbed, for that matter. But it does look like you've had a close shave. No, that's waxing. All right, given that you haven't been harmed in any way, have you ever been waxed? What makes you think you were murdered? I wasn't murdered. But you said you were. No, I said I was a victim of a crime. And that was murder. Oh, well done, Mr. Piston. With your keen eye for detail, you'll have this case sewn up in no time. Well, if the crime was murder, and you're the victim, why are you here? Well, I had to report it, didn't I? He was my husband, after all. The killer? No, the killer -y. Oh, the murder victim was your husband? Yes. He was shot in my room, in the head, on the bed. So you're a victim by marriage. This was supposed to be our honeymoon. Ah, I see. And this is how you were dressed when you found the body? Yes. I had just stepped into the shower where I was nude. Mr. Piston, can you imagine when I heard what sounded like gunshots and a blood-curdling scream? Well, naturally, I finished my shower, put on some makeup, did my hair and nails, got dressed and raced into the bedroom right away to see what was the matter. That's when I found him dead, on the bed, with a slug in his head. Were there any signs of forced entry? Well, he'd been dropping hints all weekend, so I was hoping. This is our honeymoon, after all. No, I mean to the room. Oh, no. Everything seemed perfectly normal. Except for that horrible dead guy line over there. You mean your husband? Yes, his name was Guy. And he was horrible. Oh yes, brains everywhere. Well, Mrs. Guy, normally this is the point in the investigation where I would run up to your room and examine the body. But we're short on time, so let's cut to the proverbial chase. Room service. Known. Was your husband clinically insane? Not clinically. Then that's how I know. I don't understand. And there's no time to explain. Wait, I have four minutes. Allow me to explain. If there were no signs of forced entry, then your husband must have let the killer in himself, which means the murderer must have been someone your husband knew personally or expected shortly. A bellhop, for example. Why would he be expecting a bellhop? Because your husband was not clinically insane. And since no man in his right mind would ever be alone in a room with a woman as sexy as you, without at least a bottle of champagne and a half order of oysters on the way, and your husband knew that you were about to enter the room, we know that your husband must have ordered something from room service. It makes perfect sense. And as you've just witnessed, the service in this hotel is incredibly prompt. Yes, I am impressed. We ought to make sure to leave him a big tip. So your husband's order must have arrived at the room while you were still in the shower, yet you haven't eaten. Because there wasn't any food. Exactly. And if there were no edibles in evidence, it can only mean that whoever brought the food removed it immediately after the murder to conceal the fact that the killer came from the kitchen. I don't know why I didn't see it before. Which means your husband had to have been murdered by the night shift bellhop who gained access to your room under the pretense of delivering a romantic appetizer, which you never got the chance to enjoy. Because after murdering your husband in cold blood and not wanting to leave any evidence that the killer was a member of the hotel staff, he removed the telltale oysters and champagne from the scene, something that only a member of our staff could do leaving in their place the even more telltale absence of oysters and champagne, which confirms his guilt. But why would this bellhop want to kill my husband? Because unbeknownst to your late husband, this bellhop was having an extramarital affair with his wife. You're married? No, you, you. He was having an affair with you. What? How could you possibly know that? Because you still haven't asked me the one question that any widow in her right mind would want to know the answer to in this situation. Why would that bellhop want to murder your husband? But I did ask. You did? When? Just now. It was practically the first thing that popped into my head. Oh, 
Right! Well, never mind. Mr. Piston, you really haven't been paying any attention to anything I've said, have you? For God's sakes, look at what you're wearing. That is no excuse for accusing me of being an adulteress, much less an accomplice to a murder. You're, you're right. I, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Apology accepted. It is a shame about the bellboy, though. Yeah. Listen, my uh, boss, she'll have my proverbial head, literally, if she finds out that I've shot another innocent bystander. So, do you think we could just agree that this was a self-inflicted wound? That'll be our little secret. <laughs> he looked suicidal the moment he walked in here. Aha! What? Likely story. But it's your story! Yes, it is. But what widow in her right mind? would agree to cover up the murder of a man who had nothing to do with her husband's murder unless he, in fact, had everything to do with the murder and she was in on it. But that can only mean two things. One. You mean it could only mean one thing? But you're forgetting one thing, Mr. Piston. What's that? That the widow is, in fact, not in her right mind. <laughs> well, this is a little embarrassing for both of us. <laughs> But looks like I was wrong again, and, um, well, my ship's almost over, so you're free to go. Oh, Mr. Piston, you don't know what this means to me. You may not have solved my husband's crime, but I mean, just knowing that I'm free of all charges is a load off my mind. Well, what little there is left of it. Oh! <laughs> How can I ever thank you? Well, we've got champagne and a half order of oysters, and I'm off in two minutes. I think we can get you off a lot sooner than that. Well, I didn't see that coming. Neither did I. You're alive. That's impossible. Actually, no. You're a terrible shot, Piston. Yeah, sorry about that. Don't be. Up until recently, this lady and I were having a torrid love affair right behind her husband's back, and over his dead body. Ew! At least I thought we were. I thought we were in love. Turns out she was just using me to get what she wanted. A dead husband and an airtight alibi. But what makes you think she was using you? Come on, Piston. What woman in her right mind would leave her husband for another man, only to throw herself into the arms of a third man, a third-rate hotel detective, over the lifeless corpse of her dead lover, the second man? Unless... Unless, of course, she never truly loved him to begin with using him to get rid of her wealthy husband, who she also didn't love. She probably didn't care much for the hotel detective, either. But if you'd waited a couple of minutes, she might have cared a little. Forget it, Piston. She used us, don't you see? We're all victims here. Well, actually, not me. Oh. I suppose not. I think we can correct that little oversight. Wow, look at the time. Looks like yours is up, Dick Piston. Hotel detective. Look, why would you want to kill me? I haven't done anything to you. I accept shooting at you a minute ago. I think you've forgotten something. It's a possibility that I, too, might not be in my right mind. Oh, no, I, I took that into account when you murdered two people at your place of work. What was that? The sound of your luck running out. No, no, it sounded more like an egg timer. Case dismissed. It was Saturday morning in the big city, and on a Saturday morning, my proverbial work here is done. Literally.